Today we're going to continue our conversation about proportionality and rates of change and unit rates with something called constant rate of change. So what we will focus on today is finding a constant rate of change and knowing what a constant rate of change is. And we're going to do this by using tables and graphs. We're going to start with some vocabulary. A rate of change is the change in quantity over time. So for example, if I work at a rate of $8 per hour, the change in quantity over time would mean that for one hour I get $8, for two hours I get $16. So that rate and change would be that I get eight hours, $8 every hour that changes. So a constant rate of change, though, is the rate of change in a linear relationship. So a linear relationship, linear functions and linear relationships are something we're going to talk a lot about this year. But um, we're going to start very basic in this section with linear relationships being relationships that, when graphed, form a line. And an easy way to remember this is linear. The word linear starts with the word line and ends with an AR. Okay? So let's take a look at the first example. It's been done for us. But the table shown here shows the amount of money a booster club makes washing cars for a fundraiser. Use the information to find the constant rate of change in dollars per car. Well, looking at this table, I noticed that if I wash 5 cars, I get $40. 10 cars gets me $80. 15 cars gets me $120. And 20 cars gets me $160. Not me, but the booster club. So, in order to figure out what the constant rate of change is, the first thing I need to do is, looking at my table, is I need to figure out a rate. Okay, so I need to determine a unit rate, um, to, or find a unit rate to determine the constant rate of change. Well, again, I notice that for every five cars that I increase, I increase the amount of money earned for the booster club by $40. So that means that my rate of change in money over changing cars is $40 for every five cars. That reduces to $8 for every one car, so I can conclude that the number of dollars increases by eight dollars for every car washed. So if I were to wash just one car I would get eight dollars. The reason that this table shows 5, 10, 15, and 20 is because it's just as useful to have this information as it is to have that one car gets you eight dollars. Now we are going to be using graphs as well as tables to figure out constant rates of change. So again that is what we're looking for. So if I take a look at this graph, the graph represents the distance traveled while driving on a highway. And we're looking for the constant rate of change. Well, just like we did in the last example, we can come up with a table that looks like this for this situation. The only thing we're going to need to do is remember how x and y coordinates work. Well, I know in this particular graph I have time and I have distance in miles. And I know that my x value so just a quick review of coordinates, x, y, all right, I know that my x value are these values that come over here, they're the first value, and my y value are the values that are going up this way, and I'm going to erase that line, all right, and they're the second value that's listed. So my x value is actually, in the ordered pairs that you see in this graph, the number that's listed in red, and my y value is the number that's listed in blue, so I'll even color coordinate that, okay? So from this information, in order to figure out what the constant rate of change is, it is helpful to create a table. So I know I'm looking at time in hours versus my distance in miles. And I'll even color coordinate this as well. Well, I know that I'm looking at the times of zero, one hour, two hours and three hours and I know that from my table again at zero hours I've traveled zero miles at one hour I've traveled 60 miles that's a 60 I know at two hours I've traveled 120 miles and at three hours I've traveled 180 miles so looking at this information to figure out if there's a constant rate of change alright let's think back to what we did here we need to find a unit rate first. So the rate I see happening here is for every one hour I increase, for every one hour I increase, 
there's a plus there and a plus there and a plus there, I increase by 60 miles. So the rate that I'm looking at is 60 miles per one hour. This is already reduced to a unit rate because my denominator is one. All right, so I can conclude from this that my constant rate of change is 60 miles per hour. So there's my constant rate of change. And again, it's 60 miles per one hour. Okay, well, let's keep going. So here you have a situation where you have a table compared to a graph. And the table and the graph show the hourly charge to rent a bicycle at two different stores. Which, char which store charges more per bicycle? So we have pedals, rentals, and we have super cycles. Well, pedals is already done for us. We know that... Um, you know, at two hours, they charge you a $24, hour, $24 rental fee, three hours, $36, four, $48. And they even told us that that means that we're increasing by one hour for every $12 that we pay. Or in other words, for every $12 I pay, I get one more hour of rental time. Well, Super Cycles is not set up for us in table form. But again, we know that we are going to have our hours on the x-axis and our cost on the y-axis, so we can come up with a table here. So let's go with hours and money. I know at zero hours, right there, I am going to pay zero dollars. But I know that at one hour, so that's the point one eight, it's going to cost me eight dollars. At two hours, that's the point two sixteen. So two hours cost me $16, and finally three hours cost me 24 So I need to find a constant rate of change for both of these. I know that this one is going to be $12 at Pedals Rentals, $12 for every one hour is the constant rate of change. Well, at Super Cycles, okay, I know that I am increasing at $8, $8 and eight dollars and all you have to do is 24 minus 16, 16 minus 8, 8 minus 0 unless you could just see it for every one dollar, sorry, one hour that I increase. So that means that for super cycles the rate of change, the constant rate of change is eight dollars per one hour. So which store charges more per bicycle? We know that pedals charges more because they charge $12 per hour. Okay? So, the table here shows the number of miles Claire drove on a trip. Use the information to find the constant rate of change in miles per hour. So, given a table like this, if you are having difficulty, you know, um, calculating your jumps from one um, value to the next. You can certainly rewrite your table, um, but I'm going to use it as is. So I know that I'm looking at an increase of two hours each jump plus two plus two and I know that to go from 130 to 260 that's an increase of 130. From 260 to 390 that's an increase of 130 and to go from 390 to 520, that's an increase of 130, which you guys can't see that very well. So I am, in fact, going to rewrite this table. We know we have hours and miles. I always put my hours first just because your distance is always going to depend on your hours. So it's a good habit to get into the fact that hours is an independent variable. We haven't gotten into that in class yet. But it's something we're going to do later this year, so it's really a good habit to get into from now. So 260, 390, and then 520. So again, and I'm not going to write it all out this time, I know that for every two I go up this way, I am going to be going up 130. So my rate of change is 130 miles for every two hours. 
which is not a unit rate yet, so I need to divide by 2 in the numerator and the denominator, which gives me a unit rate of 65 miles per one hour, which would just be my constant rate of change. All right, so I know that the number of miles that Claire travels is 65 miles per hour. All right, so another example where you're comparing um, rates of change. So we know that the tables here and the graph show the daily charge to rent a carpet cleaner for two different companies. We want to know which company charges less per hour. So I'm going to give you a 10 second head start, but feel free to pause. All right, so let's start going over this. I know that at Carpets Plus, ooh, sorry about that. I know at Carpets Plus, for every one day, that is, that goes by, it costs $15. And there's actually a mistake here. This should actually be 60. Okay. So I know for every one day that goes by, there's an increase of $16, $15 sorry, in the cost. So then we go to Sweepers R Us, and we're going to be looking at days versus cost. All right, I know one day costs $10, two days cost $20. Three days cost $30, and four days cost $40. I can stop there. I know that for every one day that goes by here, I increase by $10. So my constant rate of change for Carpets Plus is $15 per one day, and for Sweepers R Us, it's $10 per one day, so the company that charges less per hour is Sweepers R Us. All right, so let's get to that problem of the day. Again, this will be the first thing that we go over when you come to class tomorrow, so be prepared to show your notes and to go over this these two problems. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.